everyone welcome back to my youtube channel trouble free in today's video i'm going to explain you about zero by one knapsack problem with least cost branch and bound so in the previous video we have learnt about branch and bound and some applications of branch and bound as traveling salesperson and zero by one knapsack problem right so in this video i'll explain you about knapsack problem and uh, yeah if possible if if needed i'll break it into two parts that is if it is taking so long then i'll break it into two parts otherwise we'll finish it off in the f this this video only okay so without any delay let's get started so yeah first of all what do you mean by knapsack knapsack is nothing but it is a bag or it is a container simply to understand okay in this container you have to place the objects so that the profit is maximum suppose you have some objects suppose you have 10 objects you should place as many as objects as possible into the knapsack maybe the capacity of knapsack is only six that is it it, it can accommodate only six objects but what is your target even though you are just keeping six out of ten the profit should be maximum in in what way you arrange so that you get more profit that is how you have to arrange the items into the knapsack okay so there will be n number of objects and each object will have its individual profit and weight associated with it okay profit is to determine the maximum profit and the weight is to determine the capacity in the knapsack don't worry i'll explain you with an example then you will understand it clearly just be patient practice along with me then you will get it easily don't worry okay and we are considering the capacity of knapsack to be m okay now let's understand with an example we have n is equal to 4 n means what number of objects so number of objects is equal to how many we have we have 4 and what is m the capacity of knapsack right the capacity of knapsack is 15 and what is the profit 10 10 12 18 that is the profit of four objects we have four objects right so p1 p2 p3 p4 profit of four objects respectively and the weights of four objects respectively we have okay so now what you have to do step by step just try to concentrate guys don't deviate it don't deviate from it and also do along with me so that you can easily remember your first step is to convert all the profits into negatives that means you have 10 10 12 and my 18 right you have to convert all of them into negative values minus 10 minus 10 minus 12 and minus 18 okay you have converted now for node 1 you have to build a tree we have the state space tree in branch and bound algorithm right you are building the same tree here again okay so you have to start with node 1 let us, i'll build tree on this piece of paper so you we are starting with node 1 for node 1 we have to calculate upper bound of node 1 and lower bound of node 1 let's see how do we calculate upper bound and lower bound see upper bound means fractions fractions values are not allowed in lower bound fraction values are allowed so what do you mean by fraction values let's see now first what we'll do is we will calculate the lower bound for node 1 we will calculate the lower bound in lower bound what you what did i say fractions are allowed right so you have to start with the first object what is the first object here p1 p1 p2 p3 p4 okay you have to start with the first object that means you have to fill the knapsack with the first object in the beginning okay and what is the capacity of knapsack the capacity of knapsack is 15 remember this okay so now let's start filling what is the weight of the first object this is the weight right so 2469 and the weight is you can take weights as it is so first start with 2 okay so what is the capacity of knapsack it's 15 so how much more is remaining now in 15 you have already filled 2 so how much more is remaining 15 minus 2 13 is remaining next 
so since 13 is remaining you can fit 4 happily so next we have taken 4 so for in 13 4 is over how much more is remaining 9 so 6 6 also you can happily fit in 9 so here comes 6 so how much more is remaining now in 9 if 6 is gone how much more 3 more is remaining but how much do we have here we have 9 can you fit 9 exactly no so here we are taking fraction okay what is the fraction 3 is remaining in the knapsack and the total is 9 okay got it so just take the respective profits here so what is the profit for 2 I mean for the first object it's minus 10 minus 10 for the second object also minus 12 for third object and minus 18 for the last one so now you have to calculate the lower bound how you will do it minus 10 minus 10 minus 12 minus you cannot take minus 18 as it is why because you are taking only 3 by 9 over here right minus 18 into 3 by 9 okay so minus 10 minus 10 minus 12 is 32 I mean minus 32 9 ones 9 twos 2 times 3 is 6 so minus 32 minus 38 total you will get it as sorry minus 6 you will get total as minus 38 okay so this is the lower bound for node 1 so the lower bound for node 1 is how much minus 38 got it next let's calculate upper bound so in upper bound what did I say here fractions are not allowed fractions are not allowed means these three you will fill as it is so 2 4 6 you fill them as it is and after 2 4 6 are filled how much more is remaining 3 is remaining right but here we have 9 since you can't fit that 3 what you're doing now is you're leaving it like that only since fractions are not allowed in upper bound you're leaving it like that only so here what is the total profit then it's minus 10 for 2 minus 10 for 4 and minus 12 for 6 so what is the total profit minus 10 minus 10 minus 12 that is equal to minus 32 okay so the upper bound for node 1 is minus 32 okay we have calculated upper bound and lower bound for node 1 lower bound means you will take fractions upper bound means you will not take fractions that's all simple logic now for every node you have to calculate the same way then how do you get these nodes so from 1 we are getting two possibilities one is node 2 and the other one is node 3 okay we have two possibilities node 2 and node 3 so node 2 means x1 is equal to 1 and node 3 means x1 is equal to 0 x1 is equal to 1 means you are considering x1 x1 means first element x1 is equal to 0 means you are not taking the first element okay don't worry I'll show you what do you mean by this so now let's calculate for node 2 for node 2 lower bound let's calculate first so node 2 means what x1 is equal to 1 right so x1 is equal to mean 1 means you are definitely taking the first element okay the remaining places you are filling if there is place if there is more space available then you will fill the remaining spaces if space is not available you can leave it so after filling the first one first is first element is nothing but two right so after filling two you have more weight yes we have so then you filled with four then you filled with six then you filled with three by nine so this is the same scenario right so that is why you can take the lower bound directly so that lower bound will be minus 38 directly and here also see x1 is equal to 1 means first one pakka second third fourth elements if there is space first one pakka done next second element yeah done third element done for the fourth element we don't have any more space right so you can take upper bound also as minus 32 directly okay so for 2 upper bound of 2 is minus 32 
and lower bound of 2 is minus 38 okay done now let's calculate lower bound and upper bound for node 3 so how do you calculate for node 3 node 3 means what according to our condition x1 is equal to 0 that means you are not taking x1 okay you are eliminating x1 so let's see how we get this for node 3 we are first going to calculate lower bound so what is the condition for node 3 x1 is equal to 0 lower bound how do you calculate you can take fractions since x1 is equal to 0 you should not take x1 okay that means you have to eliminate the first element leave the first element start with the second element okay so you fill with 4 after filling with 4 how much is more remaining what is the capacity of knapsack it is 15 right so how much more is remaining 11 next 6 yes you can happily fix 6 next after fixing 6 how much more is remaining 5 so since you don't have 9 here what you will do you can take 5 by 9 since it is lower bound you can take fractions so write the associated profits also for 4 it is minus 10 and for 6 it is minus 12 and minus 18 so what will be the lower bound minus 10 minus 12 minus 18 into 5 by 9 so what you will get minus 32 I guess yes minus 32 so the lower bound for node 3 is minus 32 now do upper bound so if you do upper bound what you will get the same one but without fraction right so you are not taking the first element since x1 is equal to 0 4 6 after 4 and 6 how much more is remaining 5 but since it is fraction since fractions are not allowed you cannot take it so it is going to be minus 10 minus 12 so minus 10 minus 12 you will get minus 22 okay so write down the values in this tree in this tree so lower bound is minus 32 and upper bound is minus 22 right so upper bound of 3 is minus 22 lower bound of 3 is minus 32 yes minus 32 now among these two nodes which node is having the lowest lower bound okay don't get confused lowest lower bound so which is lower minus 38 is lower or minus 32 is lower minus 38 only right it is minus it is negatives right not 38 just plus 38 and plus 32 you're comparing negative values don't get confused so minus 38 is lower so that means you are considering this node for further branching you can stop this node over here that is you can kill this node over here okay so you are selecting two for further branching now let us see what we are going to do we are going to get node 3 and node 4 sorry node 3 is already finished right so you can get like node 4 and uh, node 5 from here so for node 4 what will be the condition x2 is equal to 1 and for node 5 the condition will be x2 is equal to 0 x1 done right now x2 x2 means second element okay so now let's calculate upper bound and lower bound for node 4 okay so for node 4 first of all what is the condition for node 4 the condition for node 4 is x1 is equal to 1 and x2 is equal to 1 x1 is equal to 1 is already satisfied so x1 is equal to 1 and x2 is equal to 1 is a condition for node 4 okay x1 is equal to 1 x2 is equal to 1 x1 is equal to 1 x2 is equal to 1 means what first node second node both are pakka and if there is more space then you have to key insert node 3 and node 4 okay so first node second node are fixed right so let's calculate lower bound first so this is our question right so lower bound for x1 is equal to 1 and x2 is equal to 1 that is 2 fix 4 fix after 2 and 4 is there more space yes after 2 and 4 15 minus 6 you have more 9 places so in 9 you can happily fix 6 done how much more is remaining here it would be 13 9 3 right so 3 by 9 is more remaining so write the weights for this minus 10 minus 10 
minus 12 and minus 18 so what is the lower bound for this minus 10 minus 10 minus 12 and minus 18 times 3 by 9 you will get 9 once 9 to 6 yeah minus 6 you will get so what is the lower lower bound minus 38 right so the lower bound for node 4 is minus 38 now let's do upper bound in upper bound same but you will not get this fraction so 2 4 6 minus 10 minus 10 and minus 12 okay S because here after 6 how much is remaining 3 but 3 is not sufficient to accommodate this 9 right and you cannot allow fractions in upper bound so you have to stop it here so minus 10 minus 10 minus 12 you will get minus 32 okay so this are the val these are the values for node 4 so let's write them so for node 4 you got upper bound as how much minus 32 and lower bound as minus 38 okay done now let's do the same for node 5 also so for node 5 node 5 what is the condition see how node 5 is coming like this right so what is the condition x1 is equal to 1 and x2 is equal to 0 so x1 is equal to 1 and x2 is equal to 0 right so let's see how we fix it first do lower bound lower bound means you are taking x1 but you are not taking x2 x1 pakka x2 no don't take it that means start with 2 since 2 is our first element so after 2 how much more is remaining in knapsack 13 and what is our second element 4 but we should not take 4 right so what is the next element 6 after taking 6 how much more is remaining 13 minus 6 it's 7 right yeah 7 so what is now the last element 9 but 9 will not be sufficient so what you will do you will do 7 by 9 okay now let's write the respective weights so what are the weights for 2 it is minus 10 so since we are not taking 4 you can delete this one so next is minus 12 and minus 18 so you will get minus 10 minus 12 minus 14 I guess over there so you will get something like around yeah minus 36 now let's do upper bound upper bound is same without this fraction right so 2 and 6 since you are not taking the second element x2 is equal to 0 you are not taking second element minus 10 minus 12 that means you will get minus 10 minus 12 minus 22 will be the upper bound okay so let's fill up the values again lower bound for node 5 is minus 36 and upper bound is minus 22 so upper bound for 5 is minus 22 lower bound for node 5 is minus 36 so now compare the both the lower bounds you have to always choose the lowest lower bound right so which is having the lowest lower bound among both of them minus 38 or minus 36 minus 38 only so you are selecting this node you can end this node over here okay you're further branching it okay so let's stop this video at this point already it is very longer so like i will continue uh, in the part two um like because i don't want to make it so long you'll just get scared on looking at it yeah let's continue the remaining video in the part two thank you